Now before we can start making any kind of recordings, we need to go into Live's Preferences and set up some options. So I'll click on Live over here and click on Preferences. The key command there, by the way, is Command Comma on a Mac. And over here, I'm going to go to the Audio tab. Over here, we have the Audio Device section. On a Mac, the driver type is Core Audio. On a PC, it's going to be some form of an ASIO driver, depending on your audio interface. Now, talking about audio interfaces, over here, we will set our audio input device, basically where the signal is going to come from, and the output or monitoring device. What's really cool is that we can set a separate input device coming from, let's say, the built in microphone here on my computer, and the audio output device here can be set to my Apogee Duet 2. But for now, I'm going to set both to the same Apogee Duet. It also gives us information about the inputs and outputs, but we can click here and configure that. So in my inputs here, I can disable the mono inputs or disable the stereo inputs if I'm not using them. Now in Live 10, we can also label these inputs. So in the input one of my audio interface, I've connected the Moog Sub 37. I'll label that. And input two, I've connected a Profit 6. Same for output configuration. So we have additional outputs here. We can enable them and we can also label each output. So let's say you have separate set of speakers on one and two as opposed to three and four, you can label those. All right, so that's the audio device section. Now let's talk about the two parameters that you need to define while recording digital audio, sample rate and bit depth. So over here in the sample rate section, we get to select the sample rate. We have a huge list. This will vary from audio interface to audio interface. Just keep in mind, the higher the sample rate, the larger the file is going to be. 44.1 kilohertz is a standard, so we can leave it at that. We can also leave the sample rate and pitch conversion option to high quality. Now for bit depth, we need to go to the Record Warp Launch tab. And over here, we have the bit depth option. We have three different options. Now we can go all the way up to 32 bit, but I would say 24 bit would be a good middle ground. So the file is not too large and we still get a good quality. File tab, we have AIFF and WAV. The WAV format is a lot more universal, so we can stick with that. All right, so there's one more thing we need to consider. Back in the audio tab, we have some controls for adjusting latency. So over here with the buffer size, the smaller the buffer size, the lower the latency you're going to get. You can see over here the input output as well as the overall latency, very low values. But keep in mind, this also means pretty heavy load on your CPU. On the other end, we can go for the highest being 2448 samples, but the overall latency is going to be very obvious. So the general rule of thumb is, while recording, go for the smallest value possible that your computer can handle. And while mixing or doing other offline tasks, it's best to go for the larger buffer size. So that's it for the audio preferences. Now we're ready to create some recordings. In the next tutorial, we will look at recording audio in the session view.